In this video, we're going to show you how you can use L2TP v3 as a tunneling mechanism to provide connectivity to external systems. The diagram here shows you the topology that we're going to create. We're actually going to create two separate simulations, one in the north, one in the south, and use the flat connector to provide connectivity between these two simulations. The diagram shows the loopback addresses that are going to be used for the tunnel endpoints, 192.168.200.1 and 200.2 respectively, and a slash 30 network that's going to run over the L2TPV tunnel connecting iOS v1 to iOS v2 using the 200.0 network, so 10, 200, 200.0 slash 30, and we're going to show that in operation. We're starting off by drawing our network. So first of all, we're going to drop a couple of iOS v instances onto the topology, as you can see. And then what we're doing is we're actually setting up an additional type device, this thing called an external router. So this is representing a physical device, or in our case, a remote system that we're then going to set a bunch of attributes on. So here what we're doing is we're setting up that far end uh, IP address that we're going to be using. So it's local insofar as this device is concerned. So 10, 200, 200.2, a slash 30, and a pseudo wire ID that's going to be used. We're also then setting the remote loopback, remote insofar as this device is concerned. So 192, 168.200.1. So with that set, we're now going to set the attributes at the other end. So we've selected iOS v1, and again, we're setting the counterpart attributes. So 192.168.200.2, its endpoint, so 200.1, again, the slash 30, and the pseudo wire ID. So that's all now set. So we are setting on the external router, we're setting on the iOS v router, we are not setting attributes on the L2TP v3 uh, tunnel device itself. So these are counterpart configuration elements that we're setting. Now let's take a look at the configuration that's being generated. So that's been built for us, so we're going to take a look on the iOS v1 router, and here we can see the results. So we can see that the interface towards the L2TP v3 tunnel device is being set up. And when we take a look on the tunnel device itself, we can see the pseudo wire is set up. We can see an additional loopback interface has been added with the associated IP address that we set earlier. And when we take a look, we can see the cross connect command setting there. So that's our L2TPV3 tunnel that's being configured for us. There's one more piece of configuration that we have to add in manually. Now this is because the remote loopback IP addresses that we're using for tunnel endpoints are not automatically advertised across our flat network. So we need to enable that deliberately. And here we are, we're setting in this network entry ourselves to enable OSPF on that flat interface. So that means that an OSPF adjacency will get built across our flat network for us. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're actually going to use two simulations and stitch them to each other across the flat network. So we now have to design our counterpart network, effectively a mirror image of what we've just designed. So again, the external router, the flat connector, the iOS v instances, um, just as we set before, but with the mirror reverse in terms of the IP addresses um, that we've been setting previously. So we're going to build that up now. So in the diagram here, the external router actually represents the far end point, the L2TP far end point that we've designed in our original simulation. So we're having to set this up again. The automated configuration engine needs to know these pieces of information. So here we can see the information that we've set previously. You know, the uh, loopback IP address, 192.168.200.2, the endpoint that we're going to try to connect to. So that's for the iOS v1 to iOS v2 network. So we can see that. 10, 200, 200.1 slash 30, and the pseudo wire 200 being set. So that's the external router element set. Now we have to do the same on the iOS v2 instance. So again, you know, what's the IP address of the far end that we're going for? So 192, 168, 
200.1 being set there. And then our endpoint, so 200.2, the slash 30, and again, the pseudo wire of 200 value being added in. So the configuration's now been built, so let's review the results of that. And here we can see on the iOS v2, there's our IP address, 10, 200, 200.2. When we look on the tunnel endpoint, there we can see the mirror image. So there's the pseudo wire, the additional loopback that's being used. And once again, there's the cross connect that we've seen previously. So again, this is the counterpart cross connect entry. Again, we need to add in this additional network statement in order to enable OSPF across that flat network. Okay, that doesn't happen uh, automatically. We need to deliberately enable that for OSPF to come up. So now we're gonna start our two simulations um, and watch those come up and into action. So we've started the one, we've started the other, so we're gonna have four iOS V instances that are gonna be coming up and that we can start to see here as those virtual machines start to build. The virtual machines are now booting. So we're gonna connect into the virtual machine. There we go. So we're into the console, and we're just going to let that system finish its boot sequence, we're connecting into the other end. So that's in the other simulation. So we're looking at the two L2TP tunnel head ends um, right now. So not the endpoints, but the head ends. We want to see those systems coming up and just check that the L2TP tunnel is indeed operational. So we can log in. There we go. And we want to just check our interfaces so we can see our IP addresses have indeed been applied. So we can see the one, the 192.168.200.2, that's the loopback that's been applied for us there. And if we look at the OSPF neighborship that has been formed automatically across the flat network. So we are seeing our other virtual machine that's running in our other simulation right now. And if we take a look at the routing table, there we can see the remote end loopback, that additional loopback that's being used for the L2TP V3 tunnel. We can then take a look at the status of the L2TP tunnel itself using the command show L2TP tunnel. And there we can see that the tunnel is in established state. So that's what we want to see. That means we have communication between the two systems. So again, just to look at the other end, we can then take a look on that system. So again, remember we're running across two different simulations here, using communication via the flat network to provide us that connectivity. And again, we can see that the L2TP tunnel has indeed been established. Okay, so now let's take a look at the real endpoint. So that's the iOS v1 and the iOS v2 devices. So we've opened up one of the console connections. And we're logging in. And here again, I want to see my uh, interfaces. There it is. So we can see there is the 10200200.2, oh, sorry, 10200200.1 interface. And here is the other end device. So again, we're going to just take a look at the interfaces there. So there we can see 10200200.2. So remember, we have the L2TP tunnel in between. So now we're gonna try and ping across that tunnel. And there it goes. So that ping just passed across the L2TP v3 tunnel in the one direction. Obviously, packets being returned in the other direction. So we have bi-directional communication. And just to prove it, we're gonna do a telnet from one end to the other. And when we log in, 
there we go, we can see we are actually connected to iOS v2. So that's a Telnet connection over the top of the L2TP v3 tunnel.